Hi again, Stephanie here together with Virtual Sheet Music and today's topic, light and fluffy in content, though at the same time based on repertoire, is about music used in TV adverts. This in any case is kind of topical given the Christmas publicity overload we are currently subject to. Now, although I watch very little TV these days, ironically on account of the irritating barrage of publicity, the advertising music of the distant past, funnily enough, still continues to haunt me. My subconscious is always stirred into action whenever I hear a particular piece of music, and try though I might, I always end up thinking about the particular product associated with the musical extract. So here are my top three advert pieces that still get me going. Now the links can be found in the video text below. It may be the case that you know these pieces already, but I'm hoping you'll discover some new works to enjoy. Also, for a bit of fun, try and guess the product attached to the music and then see if you're right by watching the actual adverts themselves, also in the video text below. So let's get going. Number one, O Fortuna from Karloff's Carmina Burana. If ever there's been an overly used and abused piece, it's this one. Everyone knows it thanks to various sources. For film, for example, there's Excalibur, The Doors and G-Force. In adverts, you've got Cult and Draft Beer and Domino's Pizza. In TV serials, it's anything from X Factor to Survivor, without mentioning, of course, its use in video games, sports, award ceremonies, etc, etc. However, I came across a Orf's piece as a little girl with a product that even today doesn't do much for me and which, in any case, I would never have cause to wear. What am I talking about? But before you try and guess the product, can we just forget about Orf's incredible contribution to the media and remind ourselves of his and his wife Gunnel Kiekman's efforts in music education. Their system whereby musicianship is encouraged through music, speech and theatre is still wildly, wildly, widely used today. And whether it's your cup of tea or not, there's no denying its continuing importance in 21st century music education. As for the text of Carmina Burana, written largely in the 11th, 12th century, mostly in Latin with some old German and Provencal, it centers around that depressing concept, wheel of fortune, you know, where happiness turns to despair and luck to misfortune, though likewise grief to joy, so maybe not so depressing after all. Now, I could speak about how this cantata is rhythmically quite challenging, you know, there are regular time signature changes, or that it has a massive orchestra, or seems to have gone wild with the percussion section, or that there seems to be little to no musical development. You know, it seems to be largely a string of great melodies throughout. However, I'd prefer to give you something much more important to think about, a phrase which appeared in the codex from which the original scripts emerged. Regnabo. Regno, regnavi, sum sine regno. I shall reign, I reign, I have reigned, I am without a realm. Put me on hold. Now the second piece today is Mascagni's Intermezzo from the opera Cavalleria Rusticana. Now this has always brought a tear to my eye and re-watching this advert, well, pathetically, I don't seem to have changed much. And with that comment, you've a clue as to the product the music is trying to sell. As for Mascagni's late romantic one-act opera, it was his absolute international hit. In Italy alone, before Mascagni's death in 1945, it had been performed a whopping 14,000 times. Well, with themes of cheating, betrayal, jealousy and revenge, you know, average soap opera material, <clears throat> you can't really fail, can you? On the other hand, with the luscious, heart-wrenching melodies you're about to hear in the next link, clearly it wasn't just the storyline that worked. Put me on hold. And number three, we have Dalib Flower Song from the opera Lacme. Now, Delib wrote this opera towards the end of the 19th century to much acclaim. Set in the 19th century India, when the Brits were still greedily pillaging in the name of our so-called empire, rather similar to multinational corporations today, don't you think? Um, Lakme is the daughter of an Indian Brahmin, a priest, who falls in love with a British officer. 
They have an illicit relationship until he comes to his senses, putting duty to the empire before any other consideration, as you do. Lacme commits suicide rather than live with the dishonor. End of story. Okay, not exactly a great mole, uh, role model for our girls today, but it has got some fantastic numbers in it, including the flower song, which was used to sell... Well, I'll leave you to guess as you listen. Put me on hold. So whilst I hope you enjoyed this video and the links below, both the original pieces and their usage in advertising, I'd like you to now have a think about what advertising pieces have stayed with you and then share your favorites. Please put the links to the adverts too so we all have a chance to enjoy them. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you, so get writing. Cheers for now, bye.